Welcome to the Smart Dating Academy podcast. I'm Bella Gandhi, the founder of Smart Dating Academy and your host. I started Smart Dating Academy in 2009 because I had this crazy knack of giving people dating advice that actually worked, that I took. I've been married for almost 25 years, and now my company helps people to date smarter and to find love. This podcast is meant to bring more love into your life, no matter where you are and what you do. And we're here to bring more life into your love. Smart daters, welcome back. This week's episode, we're going to get right to it. We're going to talk about dating. We're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about manifesting love and quantum love and sex and dating and relationships and everything you probably thought about or maybe never thought about. And I have one of my favorite people here with us who is Dr. Laura Berman. And I met Dr. Berman in a studio at WGN TV about a decade ago. And I had heard so many great things about her. And we were sitting in a green room together and just chit-chatting. And we were on a panel to talk about romantic comedies with a comedian who during the segment, I don't know if you remember, I know he sort of climbed into my lap. He might have climbed into yours too, but it was definitely yeah. a great way to be introduced. <laughs> so Dr. Berman, Laura, my friend, thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, of course. Anything and for you. You guys, and just in case you've been living, you know, in a cave and you don't know who Dr. Laura Berman is, she is a therapist. She's brilliant. She specializes in sex, love and relationships, author of nine books, award winning radio and TV host has had four TV series on own Showtime and Discovery Health. And everybody loves Dr. Laura Berman. So, Laura Tell us, how did you get into the work that you do? I have no freaking idea. No, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, it's like with everything else. The one thing I will say that my, you know, my parents did, God bless them, were wonderful parents. They did a lot wrong, just like we do, just like we all do. <laughs> um, but one of the things they did right, I think, is that they pounded into my head all the way through. And especially as I was in college and thinking about my future, just do what inspires you and success will follow. Just do what inspires you. Just major in what inspires you. Just go to grad, you know, just do. And they would, every time I'd be like, but well, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, you know, don't I have to support myself? I have, you know, so I, I definitely had that foundation that I think, cause you know, who makes a career out of being a sex, love and relationship, at least when I was doing it, you know, 20 you? 30 years ago, right? It's not something that you would imagine. Um, but now it's commonplace. I mean, nobody was a sex therapist back then. In fact, most people confuse sex therapy with sex surrogacy. So when they would meet me and hear I was a sex therapist, they thought I was actually paid to have sex with people. Um, so <laughs> that wait, you're not, you're not? <laughs> no, no, that hasn't been a career path I've pursued, although more power to those that do, um, it's illegal in most States, but you know, Nevada, it's not, um, but no, I think it was just that I grew up in that kind of family and also in a family that for good and for bad was extremely open and comfortable with sexual topics and exposed me to a lot. So I was super comfortable with it. And I was also, you know, my parents therapist from the really from before I was born, my mother conceived me when my dad got drafted to Vietnam so that she she had my sister who was four years older, but she wanted a baby to cuddle and to comfort her while she was missing my dad. <laughs> so she conceived me with that intention. Uh, and I was, and I fulfilled that intention. I was born while he was still gone. Um, and I was there, I was my mother's nurturer and my parents therapist from the time I could speak. Um, so it, I come to it very naturally. And I think that's why I was drawn to therapy, to couples therapy. And the sex thing just sort of happened by accident because it naturally folded into the couple's work I did. And I was shocked when none of my supervisors or professors or bosses, even though they were all couples therapists, didn't discuss sex. That was so bizarre to me and still is. Um, and so I went on to get 
specific training because they couldn't help me learn how to help couples with their sex lives. So I did. And then that's, that's the convoluted story at all. It's just, you know, that's what I think it is for all of us. Those things that um, are natural gifts, the gifts that are cultivated in our childhood. And sometimes, you know, the things found in our, in our deepest heartbreak or our deepest traumas are all of that is where we find our gifts and our life purpose. Yeah. And it sounds like I didn't know all I, this is why I love doing this podcast. I get to learn amazing things about people at such a much deeper level than I knew before. So, right. You were created to nurture Mm -hmm. and to be your mom's therapist and Mm -hmm. cuddler from day one. And what's so inspiring. And I hope if you're out there listening to this, because your parents didn't let you do what you wanted to do, or didn't inspire you to find your gifts, that it's never too late. If you know what you want to do, go do that. And here's a person who was very blessed, Laura, to do her thing. And when you do what you love, people detect that passion, yeah. right? And that's how you've Best been follow. on television. You've been yeah. on radio shows. You've been host. You are a host because people sense that authenticity and that sincerity of yeah. you being in flow, knowing what you're supposed to do and doing it and loving it and wanting to share that with the world. Yeah, that's really what makes you magnetic. And I think, you know, segueing beautifully into your expertise and what, you know, the purpose of I Know This Podcast is, discovering, finding, calling in love, right? Um, That's, there's no stronger aphrodisiac and magnetic pull than being truly in your most authentic, passionate expression in the world. Um, I just don't, I don't think there's anything more attractive and attracting than that. Okay. So let's dive into that. I know you've been talking a lot about manifesting love. So tell us about how do we get to this version of ourselves, right? As women, we might've been caretaking and nurturing and, and providing for so many other people that when it all strips away and maybe we find ourselves prematurely widowed, maybe we find ourselves coming out of an unexpected divorce. Maybe we find ourselves never having met the lid to our pot because we don't know why. How do we discover that? How do we discover that? Yeah. Well, and by the way, when you peel all that caretaking and who I am to everyone else in the world, very often we find there's we're not even sure what else is left, right? Like who the the hell am I if I'm not this person's wife now that I'm not their wife or these or my parents caretaker or my children's, you know, caretaker or whatever, or my friends, um, you know, and I've certainly fallen prey to that in my life. I talk about that a lot, how, um, you know, we can, that was my upbringing and that was my conditioning. So I had to uncondition myself from feeling responsible for everyone and everything around me. Right. And my mantra is just because I can fix this doesn't mean it's my job to, <laughs> you know, that's what I have to always say to myself. Um, because otherwise you make yourself sick and you drain yourself of your life force and you all also don't have the energy, focus, or time to follow your, follow your passion. So one of the worst lines in all the best romantic comedies that have ever been is Jerry Maguire's You Complete Me. You know, when he says that and, and people swooned at the time, even back then, I was like, what the hell? You know, nobody completes you. Um, and I think that is something that we unconsciously have fallen into, many of us, especially as women, um, You know, we found our identity outside ourselves. I think men do this too, but outside ourselves in terms of, um, you know, I, I, you know, I'm only going to be okay if you, if you're okay with me, right? There's that inherent thing. And a lot of that has to do with our upbringing, but I think a lot of it has to do with our socialization as women. Totally. Um, So I think finding... Dr. Teredai Trent is one of my favorite human beings, author. She wrote a beautiful book called Awakened Women. She, or woman, Awakened Woman. She was, uh, she's famous for being Oprah's favorite guest. Um, what was her name? Dr. Teredai Trent. Teredai Trent. She's okay. a, a, an African woman who, when she was 12 years old, um, you know, she, she was married basically when she was 12 or 13, had several kids by the time she was 14, lived in a tiny village in Africa. And one of these, you know, heifer society groups came through 
um, of charity, charity workers. And this woman sat all the women in the village, the mothers and daughters in a circle and said, you can achieve anything you want to. You, your dreams can be, you know, there's nothing too big or small. And she asked them, what is your dream? And Tara and I was astounded because like she'd never even considered having a dream. And what was her dream? Like you can have a dream, you know, she'd been married since she was 14 and had three or four children and lived in a tiny village in Africa. And, and she said, and she realized in that moment, my dream is to have an education. I want an education. So she did what her mother told her and she put her dream. I want to get an education. And she wrote her special dream in a box and she buried that box in the dirt, in the edges of her African village. She went on to get, I think, two PhDs. Um, She's built endless schools in Africa. She now raises money to give education to girls in Africa. Um, She's so inspiring. You definitely follow her, check her out. But one of the things that she said, as we were talking about this topic years ago, similar, you know, along these lines, and I've never forgotten this. And I think about it all the time is your greatest purpose, which is what we're talking about when you're living your true authentic purpose. That's when the magnetic stuff happens, right? Your greatest purpose is found in your greatest heartbreak. Always. You want to find your purpose. What breaks your heart, right? It may be that what breaks your heart is the girls in Africa who don't have an education, right? And like you, it broke your heart to be at the effect of this abusive husband and no future and life, just what had been told to you. And, you know, it broke your heart not to have access to education. And that became her passion, right? For someone else, it may be, you know, going through the death of a loved one or going through a terrible illness or going through a terrible divorce or being betrayed or going through a horrible chronic illness. And it's so hard and heartbreaking and so unmooring, you know, and, and such a huge, what I like to call AFGE, another fucking growth experience. Extraordinaire. Just I like, love that acronym you've coined <laughs> breaks you open, right? That is always where you find your greatest purpose, because as you heal, you learn. And as you learn, you can create, share, teach, heal others. You know, it comes from that place. And I think that really is where we find our soul path and where we find our purpose. And the other place you find your purpose, which, and these don't have to be mutually exclusive, um, but they can be, is what you would do for free. You know, because so often and I talk to my girlfriends about this all the time. I have this friend who I forced her to claim that she is a Course in Miracles coach because she has been doing it nonstop for 20 years. You know, it's 365 days. She does it every single morning. I'll say, we'll be talking about something and she'll say, well, you know, the course says, and she'll, pull, she just knows every day. She knows all the layers. She speaks about it so beautifully. She's one of my greatest teachers. And because she wasn't officially I don't even know why, just because of her own worthiness issues. She was like, no, no, I can't call myself a coach. I'm a student. I'm like, cut the crap. You're a, You're a coach. You're a freaking coach. Um, she's like, I don't think I can put freaking coach on my bio, <laughs> I was like, just, but, but we have such a hard time. She's like, that's just what I do. That's just what I love. That just comes naturally to me. And I'm like, yeah. And that's your purpose, right? Like, so what you would do for free, what you love to do when no one's looking, what comes naturally to you, we don't think of as part of our purpose or our greatest gifts or our greatest authentic expression, but boy, is that at the center of it. And then if you put that together with your greatest heartbreak, you know, you may end up crocheting blankets for PTSD in military vets, right? Your greatest heartbreak is related to the PTSD. Your greatest passion and joy is crocheting. Boom, you put them together and you have an outselling, you know, Etsy store, right? The next thing you know. And exactly. Then, and, and just because you would do it for free doesn't mean yes. you have to do it for no. free. No, it just, yes. that's where you find, just like you would give you know, dating advice, right? If you didn't, weren't doing this, you probably would just be kibitzing with people on the corner and with your friends and in the car, you know, you, that's what you'd be doing, right? Cause you love doing it. You love helping people find love and helping them uncover their own Michelangelo sculpture truth, you know, to attract others. And, you know, you'd be doing it for free if you weren't doing it for a career, I'm guessing. 
100%, but you're spot on. I made two lists, you know, and I've probably told you this story before, dear listener, about how I got into this crazy business. And I was, I'm a finance major. I have a German degree. I ran a manufacturing company, but all the while I was everybody's dating Oracle mm-hmm. and why it came out of my biggest heartbreak. Yeah. I had a pretty painful, you know, dopamine written. It was like the high highs, the low lows, all mm-hmm. the things I counsel against the big butterflies. I had that relationship for a couple of years. And when it ended, that drove me to sit down and say, okay, nerdy business student, mm-hmm. put together your own spreadsheet. A formula. Yeah. Because the common denominator in all of these messes is you. Yeah. And so I put my own path together, which led me to Andy, which helped me to start doing this for free exactly. to my friends. Yep. And when and we- it was so much fun. So right? fun. Because you wouldn't like, have kept doing it. Maybe you would have for your friends, but you wouldn't have made a career for it, of it if it wasn't something that you found fulfilling and exciting and um, and interesting and intriguing and something that you would conceivably do for free either way, right? You would do it whether you got paid or not. 100%. And, and I, love, I love this conversation. So for you that are single or even in a relationship, being magnetic, maybe to bring in a partner, maybe to bring in more friends, more amazing relationships. Who all, by the way, lead to partners. (laughs) Exactly. 100%. Right. Because we're all inherent yentas and matchmakers. Your your new friend is going to be like, oh my God, my cousin would love you. You know? Yeah. That's how it happens. You know, we did an episode a few weeks ago about living your own independent life, which makes you more attractive, be complete in yes. yourself. That's right? it. If once you are, that's why no one can complete you. If you are your whole, and this is what I always try to explain to people. If you are your whole, unbelievably, gorgeously delicious cake, and you are just living in your juicy, sugary yumminess, you're living your life, you're following your passions, you're living authentically, you're in flow a lot of the time. You know, we can talk about the quantum reasons why this Uh works in a minute, but when you do that and you are your whole delicious cake, then someone else is like the yummy sprinkles and icing, right? It makes it even better. And you definitely, you know, enjoy cake with icing and you want cake with icing. If you're, you know, I'm I sometimes I even leave the cake and just eat the icing personally. I love icing, right? But whatever it is, that other person is the icing and decoration on your cake, not the cake itself. And you, that's where we fall short, I think, is when we feel like we're missing an ingredient or we or we're unable and unwilling to do what it takes to take the emotional risks sometimes and even the literal risks to follow our passions and be our most authentic selves and grow into our own delicious cake. But that's when all the yummy things happen. Uh, 100%. That is when all the yum happens. And well, tell, let's, let's get into quantum love. I love this. I love how you came to the concept of quantum love. So just talk to us about what it is, the tenets, what you need to do. I would just love to sit here and be the audible and read quantum love to this (laughs) entire audience. So if you guys have not read it, please go get it five minutes ago. So I turn it over to you. Yeah. I mean, I've written nine books, like you said, and this is by far my most personal and most favorite. And I've never said that about a book before. Um, but I, it grew out of my own pain. Um, the pain AFGE my big old AFGE followed by, you know, the afterquakes. Um, I lost my mother who I was extremely close to. I think it was only 40 at the time um, to breast, what was originally breast cancer that metastasized. Um, And I did get time to be with her and to say goodbye, but it was the hugest, most significant, painful, soul wrenching. I mean, she was my baby and I was hers from the time I was, conceived, right? So we were really enmeshed and had a really beautiful 
complicated, but very beautiful and deep loving relationship and very courted energetically to each other and emotionally. So when she went, that was an earthquake in my life. And within a year, I just kept on, I was filming a show on own. I was like, "Uh," you know, moving through it. Go, 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 go. go, go. go. I got shit to do. And, and I also bypassed a little bit. Oh, she's still here. You know, I got a little woo woo about in spiritual, which was all true, but I was kind of leaning on that rather than really just being with myself and feeling my pain. And like all of us do. Um, And within a year I had cancer uh, with no, risk factors. Cause she, you know, it wasn't genetic or hormone related, but in the same breast, she had breast cancer. Um, and it was very sudden and I had to stop my life for almost a year, chemo, Herceptin, mastectomy, reconstruction. Um, and while that was all happening on their heels of the beloved grandmother dying, and then their mother going through chemo and getting bald and being sick, my kids all started to lose it as well. My husband, I have three sons, I had three sons at the time. My husband was the world's best cancer. She was wonderful, but my kids were really falling apart. Um, my oldest, who's now 25 and thriving, was a freshman in high school and suicidal. My middle one was uh, struggling with anxiety. My youngest was having panic attacks and school refusal. Um, and so all hell was breaking loose and therapy and all the normal tracks I would take as a mama just were not working. And so out of desperation, I went to see a woman who was, I was referred to a psychic medium who has turned out to be one of my greatest teachers. I still take her classes with her and study with her. She's amazing. Her name is Dr. Therese Rowley, but I had never known Therese. She's amazing. amazing. You should have her on your show. She's amazing. Oh, Um, so I went to her really primarily with my oldest son in mind, because he was like my, my, uh, lowest hanging, uh, emergency, (laughs) you know, how like when you have a lot of emergencies, like the one who's suicidal is like the first priority. Defcon one. (laughs) Yeah. Defcon one. So, um, I went to her, I'd never really been other than as a joke with my girlfriends to psychics or whatever. And I told her what the situation is. And she's like, okay, let me ask, you know, let me tune into his energy field. He's like at school while this is going on. And she (laughs) says, oh, he's clairsentient. And I had never heard that term before. And she explained, she's like, you know, it's, he feels what other people are feeling. She goes, but here's the tricky thing with him and a lot of other kids and even adults sometimes is that he is feeling really strongly what other people are feeling, but he can't tell the difference between his feelings and other people's feelings. So he's like an ungrounded whipping around electrical cord, just like feeling all the feelings. And that's exactly who he was. Like one minute he'd be fine. And the next minute he'd, he'd be upset and he'd have to come up with a reason in his mind why he was upset. And then he would come up with a story. It's because you gave me the red plate and not the blue plate, you know, but it was really because he was feeling the sadness or anxiety of the kids sitting next to him, you know, but he couldn't make sense of that. So it all just kind of clicked. I was like, wow, that really sounds like him. And she said, so he, and this is what was the inception of quantum love is she said, so here's what you need to know because he's feeling what you're feeling you have to be really careful about the mood you're in when you go into your room. And I said, well, into his room or you're around him. And I was like, well, you know, I always, I felt like I'd go in there and show if I'm upset or angry or had a bad day or whatever. She's like, no, he, he feels what you're hiding. He feels what you're in denial about. He feels everything. So before you go into, and she was the one who first taught me how to ground, which is one of like my deepest, most treasured foundations. I have a meditation on my website. Um, if you go there to the quantum love page, to the grounding meditation in the beginning, I was doing it like 20 times a day, but she's like, it moves you into your body again. And it grounds you energetically because your energy, he's feeling your energy and your emotions are energy. And that's what he's feeling in you and other people. So this is what I came back to later, which led to quantum love. So put a pin in that for a second. So she says, ground yourself. And she shows me how to do this. And she's like, and just open your heart and think about how much you, you know, let everything else go and just think about how much you love him, how much you believe in him. And then if he's willing, give him a grounding hug. And she explained to me how you just send love from your heart into his and imagine it going through his heart and down his spine and deep, deep, deep into the earth. And so my, you know, 15 year old 
smart ass son who had just recently told me I was a 40 year old woman looking for meaning and self-help books. So he was very poo poo uh, to anything I had to say, both as a teenager and with his scientific opinions of everything, not at all open to the woo woo. And um, I said, listen, I just, so I grounded myself, I open my heart, I go into his room and I say, so listen, you know, this is what happened today. <laughs> and I tell him, and he looks at me and says, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I think what you're saying is true. And I said, oh, okay, well, let, let me show you this other thing. She said, she said to give you a grounding hug. And he like, very, you know, he would rarely, he was 15. They don't let you hug them very often at that age, you know, but he let me kind of stiff and I did it. And he became like a, like a sack of feathers. Like he was just so limp and it affected him so deeply to this day. He always asks for a grounding hug whenever I see him, like he, he, just feels it. We were hiking the other day and he was getting up really upset about something. And afterwards he's like, can I have a grounding hug? Um, so it really, it blew us both away, the, his response to it, but we didn't say anything to each other at the time. Um, cause I was trying to play it really cool. Cause if I had showed any investment, you know, he was going to be like, ah, ah. I'm so, done. Yeah. So I dropped it after that. And then the following week he came home and he's like, you know, I was at school today and I was in a great mood and I was at my locker and all of a sudden I felt so angry and frustrated and I didn't know what was going on. But then I looked up and I realized, oh, I, it's probably that that girl is angry and frustrated a few lockers down. And like, that was the shit. Everything started to change. And so then I was like, you know, WTF, like, what is this? And how does this work? Cause my geek came out, which is a science geek. And I was like, okay, what is this? How does this work? I asked Therese some more about it. She kind of pointed me in the direction of quantum physics. And then I became a total nerd and just like dove into quantum physics, dove into like what this means and how this works scientifically. Um, and then I started playing with it. So then I started using it to positively affect my other son's anxiety. And then, so I was mostly just using it with my kids at first. And then I looked at my husband and I was like, hmm. Hey, and Sam, I, a second. how about we? Yeah, I didn't even say anything to him because he's like, my nickname for him is Senor Root Chakra because like he is so grounded and he just kind so of pats grounded. me on the head and go like, go on with your bad woo-woo he's self. He's so you cute, know? by the way, yeah, Sam he Chapman. He's lovely. Um, and so, uh, but one of the reasons I fell in love with him is that I could, you know, I was a big gaslighter back in the day when I was younger, cause it was how I survived in my family. And I was really good at running circles. So if I was in trouble, I could convince you by the end that you were the one in trouble, or you were the one that should be apologizing. I was masterful. And there was a part of me that felt safe because I could do that, but there was another part of me that knew it was fucked up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and I hadn't really had a successful relationship. I had been married and divorced to a cheater and whatever. But when I met Sam, he, you cannot gaslight him. You can't even open the gas can. Like he smells it and he, he will like, put that, that shit away. Out. Like, Get he, that out. You know, I could not. And because of that, I could not win an argument with him to save my life, which, and I was very used to winning arguments, debates, as well as, you know, emotional arguments. And so, um, so that was really part of what I fell in love with, but it was also one of my greatest frustrations in our relationship because I could never win an argument. And sometimes I wanted to, and sometimes I really believed in my position. And so um, there was one time we were in Chicago, we were living in Chicago at the time, we were outside on this little deck and he was upset with me about something. And my old codependent strategy would have been, you know, in the olden days to try to convince him that I wasn't really wrong and what he was upset about wasn't fair. And, you know, but with that it was him, his fault or that was his fault. But with him, what I was doing, because I wasn't able to do that was, you know, what most of us do, I think, which is the least healthy to do in an argument is I was listening to respond. In other words, you know, you listen and you're thinking, no, I didn't say that. No, I'm going to tell him, that. but you're not really being present with what he's saying. You're just thinking about how you're going to respond or how you're going to got break. your dukes up. Yeah. Right? You got your you're ready. Up. You're defensive. Yeah. And so I remembered 
what was ultimately to become quantum love. It didn't have a name then, but I, I sort of said, okay, like, let me just be fully grounded here. Let me ground in my body and not be my trigger. So I did that. Let me open my heart. Okay. Now let me look at this man. His mouth is moving. He's talking. I'm listening to him, but I'm also aware of like how this is a blip in the screen of our whole relationship, how much I love him. I can see that he's hurting right now, you know, whether I think it's right or wrong for him to be hurting, the man I love is hurting. And I can uh, listen to what he's saying and try it on from that perspective. But most importantly, just think about how much I love him. And I didn't change my expression from the same one I would have had, you know, listening to respond. But this man who never, I mean, he could argue in the Supreme Court. He never, he's like got a mind like a steel trap. He never loses his train of thought he lost his train of thought and his shoulders kind of relaxed and he sat down next to me. And then I put my head on his shoulder and we had a completely different conversation. I was like, wow, that's freaky. That was like a Jedi mind trick. What I just did, you know, it was amazing how he responded without me saying a word. I just changed the energetic frequency. And what I learned through this journey is that it really is, you know, in, if you're in a relationship, it really is. Um, I, I could use this for evil if I wanted to. I don't know that it works for evil. I've never <laughs> tried it. But anything I want, truly want from an authentic place, I get. And if I'm going in to have a conversation that I know is difficult, that I want to go a certain way, I, I move my body into the energetic frequency of how I want it to go. I open my heart, I ground myself and I go have the conversation. I use it in work. I use it the other day because he was getting triggered about something. We're moving houses and there are a lot of expenses and, and I was feeling his anxiety and I was starting to move into anxiety or codependence. And I just grounded myself. I moved into home frequency. I moved into the frequency of abundance and that we have everything we could possibly need and all that we want will be provided. And he immediately shifted without me saying a word. So that's basically the principle of quantum love in relationships in dating. Here's what we need to like the basics of the science of quantum love and quantum physics is that we are all pure vibrating energy. You and I seem solid, right? These mics we're talking in seem solid. You and I seem separate. We are on a certain uh, level from the level of our five senses. We are separate, but on the quantum level, on the atomic level, we are all vibrating atoms that are part of the same quantum soup. There is no separation between you and me, really. It's just perceived and our bodies are vibrating in harmony our body is a harmonic vibration, put it that way, that is constantly shifting and changing with every thought and emotion we have. And on top of, and this has been shown and proven in all sorts of really cool ways. And I get into the science in the book. I, you know, I, I can geek out with you if you want to, but we don't need to go there, but the science is there. Um, but what's really cool is that we are constantly matching, unconsciously matching each other's frequency. So in order for you and I to even be in this conversation, our frequencies have, have found a happy medium. What's really happened is you've entrained to me because every time I'm about to talk to someone, I move into home frequency, hold that frequency. So everyone else is matching me um, rather than me matching them, which was my old codependent instinct, uh, you know, years ago. So um, anyone who's in your orbit, anyone who you talk to, anyone who you even see or perceive with your five senses is vibrating in some sort of harmony with your body's vibration. But that's really important in dating, right? Because we have kind so of like, important, right? Because not even just in a date and making and connecting with someone, but who you're going to attract in, you are only going to perceive, be attractive to, and be uh, perceived as attracted to attractive to someone who vibrates in harmony with your base frequency, right? So if you are someone who lives a lot of the time in guilt and shame, let's just say, and that's something you struggle with, that's something that's part of your daily stories. If you kind of do that thought cleanse where you pay attention to the stories you're telling yourself and the way you're beating yourself up throughout the day. If you are someone who is walking through the world, maybe on the outside looks gorgeous, acts fabulous, but inside is constantly struggling with shame and guilt. You are going to repeatedly be attracted to and attract in people who are going to stimulate, match, and engage with shame and guilt with you. 
So they're either going to create more of it. They're going to be living in it. They're going to be stimulating it. They're going to be cheating on you. They're going to be criticizing you. They're going to be ghosting you. They're going to be um, really married when they're not, you know, those kinds of people. If you are attracting people like that, my guess is that is a vibrational match for where you tend to live a lot of the time. Just wow. Okay. I'm completely with you. So tell us how do, and, and I'm sure this is resonating with me. It's resonating with every person who's driving or walking, like crashing their car, listening to this right now, going, what the hell is my frequency? And why am I attracting all these red flag people? Why am I reliving all of this? How do we give us a grounding meditation? Tell us like, how can we be better now to do what yeah. you're doing? Like, I think this is amazing. Can we help people as they're listening to this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're driving, don't do what I'm about to walk you through because you got to focus. Wait till you stop. And, Pull over. <laughs> and if you go on my website, there's tons of meditations for this, not only for grounding, but also for getting clear. Because here's the thing. Let me just take a step back here. Um, there's like this larger picture, right? If you are someone who lives primarily in shame and guilt, and this isn't good for the dating academy business, but I'm just going to say, don't even try to date until you address mm. Mm. the core wounds that have brought you to a place in your life where most of the time you are speaking to yourself in ways that create shame or guilt, or you're surrounding yourself with people who are making, you're inspiring those feelings in you, right? Both are usually true. And that's usually rooted in a hypercritical upbringing, abandonment, trauma, neglect, traumas, you know, emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, but there's a whole range and a whole continuum. It doesn't mean you have to have been horrifically abused to be living in that frequency, right? But yeah. I honestly don't think you're going to get anywhere if that is where you tend to live when it comes to dating. I think you are so much better served investing and shifting and healing the stories you've been carrying your whole life that lead you to have these stories. Because by the way, if you're living in shame and guilt or fear, you are someone who really struggles at your core of feeling worthy of love. I have to be something or do something different in order to be fully worthy of love. And if that's where you're living, how the hell are you going to attract in someone who can love you well, if you're not worthy of love, right? So that has to be healed. But let's say you're not really in those far reaches and you're someone who just hasn't been, it hasn't been working for you, right? The key, key, key is not only in grounding, which I promise I will walk you through, but even as or more important is getting clear on how you want to feel. Because so here we're working with quantum love backwards, right? Our energetic frequency is rooted in our emotions. Okay. Our emotional state set our body's frequency. Okay. When you move yourself into the energetic frequency of the emotional states you want to live in and whatever, fill in the blank in love, in life, in work for today, whatever it is for this conversation, when you move your body into the energetic frequency of how you want to feel, that's when you become a magnet for it because you are now in the vibration of that, which you want to feel. And by the way, everything you want, you want because you want to feel a certain way. I mean, think about it. You For want sure. that fancy car because of how you're going to feel with it in your driveway, driving down the street. You want that certain kind of person, man, woman, whoever. How are you? It's because you want to feel how you're going to feel when you have the love of your life, right? So the question is not to ask yourself, yes, sure, what qualities that person has that you want to be with or your shared vision or your shared goals or your attraction or whatever. It's if I were to wake up next to that person every single morning and live with them day in, day out, how would I feel? And uh, I actually have a quiz on my website that shows you how you want to feel. Cause a lot of people don't even freaking know. Right. But it gives you the two main ways you want to feel. And then from that is where you begin to create and manifest because everything that we have, everything that happened in our life, we're all manifesting 24 seven. We're just not doing it consciously. Everything that's happening to us on some level, we're manifesting. Um, but we're just not aware of it. Just like most of us are matching other people's frequencies rather than having them match ours. So 
when you get clear on how you want to feel, you've been unsuccessful in love, you've been pulling in the wrong people, it's not really been working for you, start with how you want to feel, first of all. And then once you know that, you're going to ground, and I'll take you through two steps. You're going to ground, and then I'm going to move you into um, what it feels like to be in the energetic frequency of the feeling you want to create in your life and love. And then if you can hold that frequency, and I'll talk to you about how to do that, even, you know, 51% of the time, if you can keep moving back and forth into that frequency, but spend 51% of your time there, you will be astounded at the miracles. They seem like miracles that start happening in terms of who you attract in and what opportunities and what experiences you're attracting into your life. Make sense? Perfect. Okay. So let's Eager to hear. Okay. Eager to hear. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to just ask everyone, right? Even if you, you may not know, this is just for the purpose of practice. You can go to my website later and see exactly how you want to feel in love or whatever, but just choose a feeling that you love to feel. So let's say it's passion or playfulness or feeling cherished or feeling safe or feeling protected or feeling excited or feeling um, seductive or whatever. Just pick one for the purposes of this exercise. Okay. You got one, Bella? Yes. You don't have to say it, but you have to get, okay. So the first thing is to ground. And by the way, the more you do this, the more in your body you are, the more you can create what you want, the more of an internal compass you have. This has so many benefits. So um, I put sticky notes on the mirrors in my car everywhere in the beginning, just to ground, just to remind me to do this because it's real quick. Um, you're going to take a really, uh, you can start taking deep breaths as I talk you through this, but you're going to take some deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And imagine kind of filling up your whole belly um, as you breathe in. And on your next breath in, I want you to imagine a light, a beautiful light, any color that comes to you, streaming in through the top of your head, that crown chakra. As you breathe in, it's filling every cell of your body. And as you start to breathe out and then fully breathe out, it is shooting out your tailbone deep, deep, deep into the earth, like roots of a tree grounding you there. So take three breaths like that and just notice what you feel in your body, right? So you're breathing in that beautiful light as you breathe in, it's filling every cell of your body with that beautiful light. And then it helps you even breathe out like that. It goes straight out your tailbone, deep, deep, deep into the earth. So take a few more breaths like that. And, and one of the things I like to do, just like the roots of a tree should be twice the width of its widest branches. Think about your energetic reach today, right? Is it, you're going to be talking to a hundred people. You're going to just be seeing one friend. You can make your roots as wide and as deep as you want to. Um, so take one more breath, grounding breath. And you probably notice um, sort of a settling. Your hips will soften a little bit. You'll feel kind of settled into your seat a little bit more. I love to do this sitting on the ground even. Um, uh, it feels even better to me. <laughs> or standing barefoot on the earth or on the grass. I love doing it that way too. So now that you're grounded and your, your, your energy is now grounded as above, so below, all connected, right? Now... Here's the cool part. We're going to move your body now that we're grounded in it into the energy of the feeling you want to manifest more of in your life. So um, let me just think I'll use one of mine. I want to feel um, peace. Peace is one that's coming up for me today. Okay. So I'm going to use myself as an example, just to walk you through this. I want you to imagine it can be a real time from your past or even just a, a, a fantasy or an imaginary time or something you read or one time in a romance novel or something, but um, a time in your life or an imagined time when you felt that feeling fully. So for me, it would be a time that I felt unadulterated, complete peace, like the most peace I could possibly imagine. Um, so imagine that scene, right? So as I'm sitting here thinking about peace, 
um, I see a time that I was sitting up on top of this rock in uh, like a, a swimming, jumping, rock jumping hole with my kids and the sun was shining and it was so beautiful. And I was listening to all the kids jump and scream and have such a fun, a fun time. And I was feeling the energy of the rock and the sun on my face. Right. So here's the key. I'm there in first person. I am not looking at you. So you're not looking at yourself in that scene. You are in the scene in first person as if it's happening right here, right now. So I can look down at my feet on the rock and my knees bent in front of me. I can see the goosebumps on my arm from swimming in the cold water up to the rock. I can hear the sounds of the kids. I can smell the trees around me, right? I am there in first person. And the reason for that is your body can't tell the difference between reality and rehearsal. So you are literally, your body thinks as you do this, that you are in that scene. And so therefore it is moving into the frequency of the feeling that that scene creates in you without you having to feel anything. You're going to feel it as you imagine the scene in first person, but now your body is moving into that frequency. So what you probably feel is a little bubbling and spreading in your chest a loosening of your hips, a loosening of your back. Maybe there's a smile on your face, a loosening in your throat, softening in your throat, right? So just anchor, it can be any or all or none of those, but just anchor what bodily sensations, which you will feel now in this grounded state, what bodily sensations, this scene and thus the feeling you wanna create, creates in your body, right? So we wanna anchor this. You are now in the energetic frequency of that feeling you want to create in love or life or anything else, right? So from this place, I like to just even ask my body to anchor. If it feels really good to you, just say, yes, yes. I say yes to this feeling of blank, fill in your blank for me. I say yes to this feeling of peace today and every day I claim peace. I anchor this feeling in my body. I call it into my life. Now I'm putting it into my conscious awareness. And what I'm going to do in my day-to-day -day life today and moving forward is I'm going to be looking for opportunities around me that inspire feelings of peace, right? So if I'm walking to, by a park and I see a beautiful area to sit amongst some flowers, instead of continuing to walk, I'm going to go in there and sit for a minute and be like, yeah, I welcome in peace. This is a really peaceful place. And I'm going to let my movie, my body move back into that vibration, right? I'm going to look around me and start using my, the lens that I'm looking for, for peace. Oh, is there peace over there? Or is there peace over there? Oh, I'm going to go over there. And that's what I'm going to follow. And all of a sudden, all these opportunities and people and situations are going to start showing up all of a sudden that my, that I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds really peaceful. Yeah. I do want to do that. Right. Totally. And that's just my feeling, right? You're, I'm just using that as an example, but whatever feeling you want to feel. And so for a dater, for example, yeah. if mm -hmm. this person needs to get on the apps and start to build their dating funnel, or mm -hmm. maybe, you know, they want to feel, maybe they want to feel attractive. They want to feel like there's an abundance of good people. Yeah. If they're going on a date, they want to feel beautiful. They want to feel charming. They want to feel flirtatious, right? right? So are these words that you would, that you hear often for people that are looking for love? Yes. But I would even take it a step further than that because you're being, you know, and I, I don't, I'm not good at mincing words. I don't mean this as a criticism, but you're being accidentally short-sighted, right? You're only thinking about how they're going to feel on the date. I want you, the charming part, but maybe your biggest feeling you want. I, I, I don't think most people would say, once I find that perfect person, I want to wake up every day feeling charming. Totally. Right? Maybe no. they do, but it's they, they want to feel charming for the, for the initial date, right? So if you just want a lot of dates, then go with charming. But that's why it's so important to even jump step over that and think about mm. how you want to feel in love, right? Because if how you want to feel in love, let's say, is desired, right? That would be the closest thing to charming for the sake of this. Or safe, right? Or safe. safe is a big deal. Okay. All right. So let's say you want to feel safe. Really get to know what that feeling of safety. Think about those times in your life that you felt unequivocal, holding safety, unconditional acceptance, Make it up in your mind if you never had that in your life, right? Imagine it. And 
And then before you walk into the bar or the coffee shop or anything else, even what that morning before you get into your car or go out the door, ground yourself, move yourself into the energetic frequency in your mind of safety. And the way it would look on this in this relationship is, is safety in that. And you will have already had this scene in your mind is that like, I'm showing up as my true authentic self. I don't have to be mincing my words or being hyper vigilant. You know, I'm obviously just meeting this person. So I'm not going to like, you know, fart it all out on the table, overshare, and, overshare, yeah. whatever. But like this person is someone who wants to get my true wants to get to know my true self who wants to show up authentically and be unconditionally accepted him, him or herself and wants the same for me. And I am going to show up on this date in full authenticity and acceptance and expecting safety and acceptance in return. And when I walk into that restaurant or bar or coffee shop, I am energetically actually emitting that frequency. So the only people that are even, and you can do that before you push, put your profile up on the dating app. And the only people that are going to reach out to you are probably going to be people that match that frequency. And even better, if you get clear on how you want to feel in love and put it in your profile, I'm curious what you think about this, Bella, but like, let's say the three, the two top ways you want to feel is safe and vulnerable, right? So one of your sentences is I'm so excited to find my person who believes in authenticity and be, and being vulnerable with each other and creating full safety in love, right? Boom. You're getting rid of 90% of the assholes right there. Totally. Right. The players, the hookuppers. Right. That's right. not safe. That's not vulnerable. Right. So the, I, so I think it would be cool to even put that in your profile. All right. I'm going to push pause. I'm going to push pause because I'm just realizing that my uh, my power is about to go. So I'm going to plug in my computer. Oh, can you push okay. pause on the recording for a minute. Just yeah. Can you edit this? Out? OK. All right, I so. love this about knowing how you want to feel in your relationship. Okay. Not just on a date, like yeah. make it bigger. Do you bigger. want to feel excited? Do you want to feel passionate? Do you want to feel safe? Do you and want to feel connected? Do you want to yeah. feel inspired? Do you want to feel desired? You know, don't even think about the short-term dating. Think about when that, when you have that perfect person, because they're there, they just haven't shown up in your life yet right? It's like a seed beneath the surface that hasn't germinated and popped through yet, but it's still there, right? They're there. You They're there. To find them. So, and I would say even call them in, right? Like call them in with your energetic frequency because magnetize them, right? You can find them and you're not going to sit back on your couch and expect them to ring your doorbell, but think in terms of magnetizing, being a magnet for someone who is going to um, inspire those feelings in you by the very essence of who they are and how they operate in the world. 100%. I'm just thinking like grounding and you're feeling safe and you're feeling accepted. And if you walk into a date like that, you guys yeah, think about, you're not going to worry about, oh my God, I have a, like a little lipstick on my teeth. Who right. cares? Who you're cares? feeling safe and you're feeling accepted. And what is that going to do energetically? It's going to make you be the most authentic version yeah. of yourself. That's on the logistical side, right? On the logistical yes. side, your body language, the things you say, the expressions on your face, all of that is going to emit, I'm a secure, grounded, safe, confident person, right? Which is very attractive. And that's all yummy, good stuff. But on an energetic quantum level, what you are doing is moving that person across from you into, the, because otherwise you would just match theirs and they'd match yours and you'd find a happy medium. Or if you tend toward codependence, like I did, you would just be matching everyone else, <laughs> giving Same. up your frequency Same. altogether, right? 100%. So when you walk in holding your frequency, guess what? Everyone and everything around you matches you. So then that date matches your frequency of safety and connection or, or authenticity. And if they can't match that, 
guess what they do? They leave or they don't ask for a second date or they don't show like they won't even show up in your field. Right. So you're skipping over. You may end up with shorter dates, right? Because that person won't be able, then it won't be aggressive or uncomfortable. It'll just be really clear to you. This isn't a match, right? It's a weed out process. It's, it's a, a weeding out process. Weed out process. It's yeah. pruning the people that aren't matching. That aren't going to give you what you, you want. want to feel in the future. And yeah. if they don't call, guess what? The exterminator just said, and yeah, it's great bugs. Like that's right. That's it. Right. That person has been weeded out. So sometimes we say dodging a bullet, but in mm -hmm. this case, I think people weed themselves out. If yeah. they don't match, if you come in grounded with that energy, you've grounded yourself, you visualize, you have put yourself in that moment of when you felt so safe, so loved, so connected. So and you walk in yeah. with that. Yeah. That's incredibly magnetic yes. to the right person. To the right person. Someone who's looking for a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, or has bad energy or is a gaslighter, hasn't done their yeah, work. They're yet, not gonna. They're gonna be like, hey, wow, what's this? In right. my case, and then you'll also find that some people will say, Wow, you know, I just there's something about you that just feels so safe and like you seem so together and, you know, like you'll find that people really, and that person may not be, you know, that person may be a match for you or maybe someone who's so ungrounded themselves that they're really attracted to your togetherness. Right. And then you'll have to decide whether that's what you want or not. So it's not going to only be, it's going to be anyone who is magnetized to the, per, you know, she or he who feels and wants to feel completely accepted and authentic. Right. And, and so who doesn't, that's, who doesn't, right. <laughs> Except the gaslighters and assholes. So we get rid of those. Right. And you can fill in any feeling. I think there's like four or five, seven different feeling sets in this quiz that I was talking about that I find that people are looking for most frequently in love. But, um, you know, you can, can you share those. Um, I'm trying to remember it was safe. I, I, cause I'm so bad at memory lately, but safe That's and okay. safe and, uh, connected, vulnerable and authentic, uh, desired and passionate, adventurous and playful. Um, they were feeling sets that I found when I am trying to remember the other ones I can't right now, but, um, uh, they're kind of what I find that people say the most that they're missing in their love relationship. They wish they could have for, more of, or that they're looking for. Um, and it's, uh, it's really powerful once, cause, cause what you can do then once you know how you want to feel, if you're someone looking for love is that you're doing this before you go on the dating app, before you go on a date, you're, you know, before you leave the house, but you're also, you're doing it around your dating quote unquote life. But what's really important to remember is that you're also just doing it in your day-to-day -day life, because it's not that you just want to feel right safe in love. You want to feel safe, right? So period. if you, in period, life. so if you are now walking through the world saying, okay, I'm someone who wants to feel safe and unconditionally accepted and you're using that as the lens, you are now calling in and looking for opportunities and connections and relationships and situations that inspire safety and acceptance, right? So when, you know, you get that all of a sudden that invitation to, you know, a, a costume dance party where everybody comes as their crazy alter egos, you know, you think, Hey, this is a great opportunity for me to practice. Like just being totally off, you know, with a whole bunch of other people are in their complete authenticity, right? I'm going to go to this thing and, and have some fun in my true authentic expression and practice feeling safety in this low stakes situation with all these people that I don't even know. And by the way, once you go, you're going to meet three or four people that end up becoming great friends and maybe even a date, right? So you're living your life that way, cultivating that feeling wherever you find it, calling the opportunities for those feelings in. And before you know it, you're spending 51% of your time in feelings of safety and unconditional acceptance. And then boy, does your life become that, including your dating life? I love this so much. I mean, and it's all true. Do you, are there 
other things that you can, and I know this is riveting to most people, you're picturing yourself grounded with light coming into your head and shooting up <laughs> your tailbone and you're grounded with roots that are wider than the widest branches and all of these amazing things. Are there any other things you can tell us about quantum love and bringing it into our lives yeah. or being it? Well, a lot of what I talk about in, in quantum love is in recognizing what, and this is how you really start to shift what the way your life is to the life that you really want in love and everything um, is what I call your FE, your E8, your ego home frequency index. It looks like, um, cause what I have, and you'll see this in the book and on the web, on the quantum love page of my website is what I call the quantum love map. So every feeling we have has an energetic frequency and shame and guilt, really shame. And then guilt shame is the lowest frequency emotion we can feel love bliss is the highest, right? Hopefully none of us spend our eight. Well, none of us can spend 24 seven in love and bliss, except maybe the Dalai Lama. Right. And hopefully we don't spend all of our time in shame or guilt. Right. But there's a continuum. And so the lowest frequency is shame. The highest frequency is love bliss that, you know, bliss, I would sort of say is kind of orgasm, right? It's like that highest, highest point of joy that we touch into, but few of us remain. Um, and then there's everything in between once. So, so the way that I explain it, and there have been, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. I didn't, you know, I'm just calling all the science together, but they've been able to calibrate the energetic frequency that this of, of these emotions in our bodies and our energetic frequency emits and entrains other people to us. Right. So that's why it's a Jedi mind trick for your relationship, because in a love relationship, we are, are, we are not only matching each other's frequencies, we are entrained uh, energetically with each other, which is like a quantum entanglement. So that means it's immediate and instantaneous matching. So you're not having to find a happy medium. You're just, whoosh, you know, and they've been able to show, like show this in so many, I could go geek out on all the science, but they've been, I'll just give you one quick example. There was a University of Washington study where they took people, couples in loving relationship took them to different sides of the campus. And when they shined a light in the eye of one partner, the ocular receptors in the brain of the other lit up. Like we are so physically and energetically matched in ways that we aren't consciously aware of. And it is a blessing and a curse energetically, right? So that's why it's so important. That example I gave with my son was a perfect example of how entrained and enmeshed we are to one another energetically, but there is a continuum, right? So the FE is like, uh, where you tend to live on that quantum love map at your, on average at your highest point and at your lowest point. And so we tend to live in different points of For that sure. quantum love map, right? So one of us may tend to live in our lowest point is that we're feeling angry. And our highest point is that we're feeling, um, you know, uh, loving, let's just say, right. So that or someone else, it may be, I, you know, my lowest point is shame and my highest point is curiosity. Right. So, so there's a way, and I have quizzes and everything else, but there's a way that you figure out not only where, what your kind of range is, where you tend to live, but what it also shows you, the FE is kind of shaped like an a sideways, you know, an infinity symbol or a sideways eight, that midpoint, once you track the midpoint, which I show you how to do, it's easy, but once you get that high point and low point about, and this may be different for everything, right? Like, so you say, may say, when I think about love at my lowest low, I feel this way at my highest high, I feel this way. It could be in my day-to-day -day life at my lowest low, it could be around parenting, right? So you can do this in general or for something specific, but that midpoint is super important because that midpoint is your point of transition that you want to start getting really, really conscious about, right? So if the midpoint on your FA, FE, where you tend to live, on that quantum love map, let's say is anger, right? That's when you start to move up the scale or down the scale. That is a really important point of consciousness for you. So then every time you notice you're feeling angry, you claim the choice. Am I going to move into those lower frequencies or into these higher frequencies? Because the truth is 
the higher, the lower your frequency, the less of what you want is going to show up in your world. The less of what you want, you're going to be manifesting because the quantum field and reality, this is quantum physics, it's crazy, responds to your energetic frequency. It matches it. So the more time you spend, even in optimism and curiosity and openness and hopefulness, the more the universe will sh bring those things to your reality. Um, and that, I mean, this is why quantum physicists don't have to leave the building and or do their experiments in a vacuum because their unconscious, much less conscious expectations of how the outcome is going to go determines what's going to happen on the atomic level of these experiments. So they will accidentally impact the outcome of the experiment just by being in the room with by it. By being of, there. Because of their energetic frequency of their expectation, conscious or otherwise. So that's what's so cool about that is that once you start to get clear on how you want to feel and you work to cultivate more of that feeling in your life and you start to to recognize when you're at that midpoint and moving away from that, which you want to feel, then so much more magic starts showing up in your life of opportunities, people, dates, connections, experiences that inspire more of that feeling in your life. It's like quantum love as you're talking about it is the basis for the law of attraction. It is. It's the science. It's, I always say it's like the secret behind the secret because it's the secret behind the secret, because, you know, the famous example, you write yourself a check for a million dollars, right? Well, plenty of people write themselves a check for a million dollars and nothing happens. The problem is that they aren't moving their bodies and their minds into the energetic frequency of he or she or they who has a million dollars in their pocket. What would that feel like? What would you feel if you had that million dollars and how can you live from that feeling every day and, and manifest more of that feeling in your life? And by the way, you will end up with a million dollars and a million other things that create that feeling that a million dollars would have created in you. It's amazing. Absolutely. Awesome. So tell you have also, and I think this is really closely related, we've talked so much about ourselves and, and being quantum love. How do we, as we think about love, you talk about manifesting and manifesting partners. And I know you've been doing this now as part of your practice. How do we do that? Yeah. Well, I have, um, you should join it, Bella. I have a manifesting Mondays club with um, my dear friend, Andrea Kane. She's another Chicago. And oh, I've met you. Andrea. Yeah, she's yeah. She probably met her with me a couple of times. She's one For of my sure. dear friends. She's an amazing teacher. She has a book uh, out called Kicking Ass in a Corset, Seven Principles of Internally Referenced Leadership. And it's all about, you know, it's so compatible with quantum love in many ways, because it's all about how to source your peace and your joy and your wholeness and your grounding from inside out versus outside in. Um, but we have been, she's all about manifesting and is more of a geek than I am with this stuff. So we've been doing this monthly club where we meet the first Monday of every month. And then halfway through the month, we meet for like office hours just to troubleshoot and whatever, you know, with, with everybody. And it's an amazing group of people. You get all the recordings, whether you come to the actual you know, times or not, but it's all about manifesting the life you want and how, and really what it entails is learning how to become an energetic match for the life you want and removing the blocks from that are in the way. And that's what a lot of what we work on is. So every month someone gets into what we call the love seat rather than the hot seat, but someone gets into the love seat and I work with them one-on-one -on -one around an area that they're feeling stuck. We're like, I know what I want is to feel playful. And, you know, I know how I want to feel. It's just not, I keep attracting in this type or I can't seem, or I had this experience with this guy I was dating. And so then we go into it and we get to the core of what the block is. And it's always what everybody in the room needs to hear. You know, that's how these things work. 
Um, but it's a really cool group. And I do find that doing this in community and doing this in a way that you can feel really supported because here's the cool thing about manifesting love or manifesting everything. We, this is our birthright. We're, we're born with the internal instinct and knowledge of how to do this. It just gets conditioned out of us and like covered up with mud, like that famous Buddhist statue that all of a sudden there was a crack in it after hundreds of years, they thought it was clay. And what had happened is hundreds of years ago during some invasion, the the monks had covered this pure gold Buddha statue with mud to hide it from the invaders so it wouldn't be pillaged. And for hundreds and hundreds of years, no one thought twice about it. But once they removed this crack showed, they removed the mud and there was this gorgeous golden Buddha underneath. And that's how I think of us. We have all this mud that gets caked on us from our traumas and dramas and big T and little T traumas and neglects and criticism and heartaches and heartbreaks and bullied and blah, blah, blah. And it just cakes mud on this very natural, brilliant ability we have. And so what we, what I think is important is to be in community and to be in the process of getting support for, um, you know, being around other people who are on a similar journey and who will mirror you and support you in that. And also in learning how to crack through the mud. Mm, crack through the mud. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a golden statue right inside of you. So we'll just have to hose off the mud a little yeah, bit. That's it. Maybe crack through a few hard places. And once it cracks open, um, you know, that's how the light gets out, right? Wasn't that Leonard Cohen? It's, it's the cracks. I don't mind the cracks because that's how the light gets out. Oh yeah. my gosh. Wow. I'm so blown away. I feel like I've, I've, I've matched your energy. You're like the mm-hmm. Jedi mind. I'm like, I'm feeling really connected <laughs> and powerful and passionate. So whatever you're putting out there, yeah. I've drank You've and I've trained. I've it, it's been injected into I my only DNA. use my powers for good. And by the way, I don't have powers that anyone else doesn't have. I've just been cultivating them. But this is the cool part. Anytime I go into a meeting or an interview or a conversation or a difficult conversation with my kids or husband husband or whatever, I use this and I just let everyone else match me. And it always is an an amazing time for all parties involved. Right. And I'm guessing so much of your time, you're like, I just want to be love. Yeah, that's it. I just, yeah, I mean, and every, and I don't make new year's resolutions for years now. I just make resolutions on how I want to feel and this, and every year it's different, right? But this year it was peace, love, and connection. That was for me, what was most important this year, other years, it's been other things. And so, uh, yeah, that's what I put out, you know, as I was about to sit down with you, everything I do, that's how I want to feel this year until I decide I want to feel something different until I'm like, okay, I had enough of that. Now I want to feel excitement and passion, you know, whatever, but I'm still loving the peace, love and connection. So if you're feeling peace, love and connection, you entrain to me. I'm totally feeling peace, love, and connection. <laughs> I, we've now melded. We are one. <laughs> we um, already were. You're just feeling it now. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely, I'm awakened to it at this point. So thank you so, so much for being here for this amazing um, conversation. I just, I'm like in my feels and I'm sure hopefully you guys are driving in your car or blow drying your hair or walking your dog or snuggled up in bed right now with the covers pulled up tight in a nice, cool environment. And I thank you, Laura, for being here and for being a friend and for always being willing to give because you're an incredibly generous, thoughtful person. And, and to all of you, I wish you an envisioned quantum love. Think about what do you want to be? What do you want to feel? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to ground yourself? How are you going to show up everywhere in that world with how you want to feel? And how are you going to watch with marvel at how people sink to you, maybe for the first time in your life? So I wish you a week of quantum love until we meet again next week.